what's going on, man? I'm your host, Stephen Briggs. Welcome to We Own the Laughs. Oh, I'm excited to be here. I just got back from doing some shows in Japan, which was a lot of fun. I did a show for all Japanese people, and every time they liked a joke, they didn't laugh. They just chant, Why guy? Why guy? It's the weirdest thing. And then after the show, one of the girls, she takes me in the bathroom, and we start hooking up. And right before I came, I took my shoes off because she's Asian. You got to take your shoes off before you come inside. <laughs> I've had some weird gigs, too. One time I got hired to do a gig and I didn't look at the email until I was about to leave. And I noticed they got me a Greyhound ticket. Um, I don't know if anyone here has ridden the Greyhound. That is like the purge, okay? It is insane. Someone could get stabbed on the Greyhound. You're like, we need to go to a doctor. And the bus driver's like, no, I don't stop till I get to our destination. I'm like, what is this, the bus from Speed? I get on the bus and I'm scared, but I end up meeting this girl, Nicole, on the Greyhound. She's everything I like in a girl. She speaks three different languages. She's a thicker girl. And I was like, oh, my gosh, am I about to find love on the Greyhound? And then all of a sudden, the cops pull the Greyhound over. Just, and this cop gets on with a drug dog. And he goes, all right. If you got any drugs, let me know now. It's going to be a lot easier for you. <laughs> so I start eating my weed. I'm just like, gah, 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 gah. and he stops over where I'm at. I'm like, oh, no, the dog can smell the container. And he reaches over to me, and he reaches past me. He grabs Nicole, and he takes her off the bus, and he lifts up her shirt, and she has cocaine strapped to her stomach. I was like, what the hell? She's skinny? Take her to jail. She lied, okay? You ain't gonna catfish me on the Greyhound. I live in LA now. I was dating this girl. Um, we recently broke up because somebody robbed us. Um, and she says I pushed her in front of me. I don't remember that. But I did say the most LA thing I've ever said. I said, please don't hit me. I have an audition tomorrow. She was so mad about that. I've been living in LA for a while. When I first moved to LA, I used to throw house parties at my place. I remember uh, one time I had my neighbor Jessica come over and she's helping me set up and she goes, you know, I got a guy coming over. And I go, that's great, Jessica. And she goes, yeah, but he's got herpes to keep down the low. <laughs> Why tell me this? The whole time I can't enjoy the party because I'm like, oh, did he just double dip in the guacamole? <laughs> ah, throw it out. I was like, oh no, the sour cream. Why? Then I see him and her go to the bathroom and I know they're hooking up. I can hear them hooking up. And she comes out and I go, Jessica, what the hell? You told me that guy has herpes. And she goes, I know. I gave it to him. I was like, ah. <laughs> Most people in here laughed at that joke. The rest have herpes. I don't like that. You know what else I don't like? When somebody doesn't pay me back when I lend him money. I lent this guy $100. He stopped answering my phone calls, my text messages. I couldn't get a hold of him. I ran him six months later in a bar. I went up to him and said, hey, man, what happened to the $100 you owe me? He goes, there's no owing friendship. I was like, dude, I bet you $100 right now I can get any girl in this bar before you can. I point to a girl in the back of the bar. I said, I bet you $100 I get her before you can. He walks up to her. Ten minutes he gets out of the bar. He ends up sleeping with her. I'm a man of my word. I pay him the $100. But you see, the bet was fixed because I knew she had herpes. I was like, get him, Jessica. <laughs> get him. Another thing I've noticed uh, living in L.A. is you can't impress anybody. Nobody gets impressed in L.A. Like Jesus could come back and perform the miracle of feeding 5,000 people with two loaves of bread. And people in L.A. be like, we don't eat carbs, Jesus. <laughs> He's like, I got this quail. They're like, it's pronounced quinoa, Jesus. <laughs> my dad's very, very religious. Uh, people always ask me, how religious is your dad? Uh, my dad used to preach on the side of the street. He just had one follower, this homeless man that's like, oh, come on, give me the word. And I'll never forget this one time my dad's preaching. He's like, you got to believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on the cross. And this one guy's walking by. He's like, hey, man, why don't you shut up? And my dad keeps on going. So the guy comes over and pushes my dad. My dad turns around and punches him in the face. And this homeless man, he leaps to his feet. He's like, that man may not believe in Jesus' cross, but he's definitely going to believe in the right cross. <laughs> oh, I hope he got the blue cross because he's going to need the red cross. <laughs> I was like, that homeless man's been smoking the green cross. This is something that's bizarre. My dad used to be best friends with a serial killer named David Berkowitz. Son of Sam, if you don't know who that is. That's a guy who went around the 70s shooting people in New York. My dad played basketball with this guy every single day. I was like, Dad, that's disturbing. Who won? 
And my dad verbatim goes, Berkowitz trials him the only court he lost in. Yeah, the man was terrible at defense, but everyone knows he was a great shooter. Bing, 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 bing. In the trial, they asked Berkowitz, they go, why'd you do it? And he goes, there's a dog outside my window telling me to kill people. And my dad goes, holy shit, that was a prank. <laughs> Can we go further, you guys think? What do you think? Go further? Definitely, let's do it. Uh, I looked up the definition of a serial killer. Definition of a serial killer is somebody's killed three or more people. I don't know if you know this, the guy who killed Jesus was a serial killer because that's the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I know Christians get mad about that joke because I take it this far. <laughs> oh. Nailed it. <laughs> you know what I like about that joke is for most people in the room, the first punchline dies, but by the third punchline, the joke resurrects itself. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to bring up your first comedian. This guy's amazing. Please give it up for Joe Alanese, everybody. Sir? How you guys doing tonight? A little bit about me. Growing up, I thought I was a part of a really cool comic book club. But as it turns out, I was just a Jehovah's Witness. I was like, this is the worst comic book. <laughs> he has no powers. And for some reason, I don't get birthdays. Like, I don't, I don't know what happened here. I, uh, I, I spent a good portion of my day watching Netflix. I was watching uh, the Fire Festival documentary. Have you guys seen this thing? For those of you guys who haven't seen it, I'll give you the general premise. All these rich kids got together, and they were like, let's leave all these poor people behind and party on an island, right? And then when they showed up, what they were promised wasn't there, <laughs> right? Like, think about that. What they were promised wasn't there, and they were upset. I would have been fine if that were me, right? Because I grew up poor. And when you grow up poor, there's one thing you realize that what you're promised and what you expect, those are two different things. <laughs> like, I would have showed up and been fine. Like, those people showed up and they were like, we were promised villas and there's tents. We were promised sushi and there's cheese sandwiches. And we were promised Blink-182. And they're not here. If that would have been me, I would have been like, wow, this is cool. Oh, what do they have, tents? Wow, that looks like fun. Is that a cheese sandwich? Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Blink-182 isn't here? <laughs> All right, can we do this again next year? This is fun, this is good. When you grow up poor, man, like your dreams are just different, right? Like what you expect is different from life. Nowhere did that become more apparent to me than when I went to Las Vegas recently. First of all, I'm 33 and I do Vegas differently now. Like remember when you were young and you used to try to like tackle the town, right? Driving to Vegas, like Vegas isn't ready, bro. It ain't ready. Like, I'm 33 now, and I went to Vegas with one of my friends who still acts like that. Like, we were in the car, and he's like, Joe, Vegas isn't ready, bro. It ain't ready. And I looked at him, and I was like, Kyle, we're drinking Popov in a Jetta. <laughs> Vegas is ready. Like, they're fine. Like, you think Vegas is like, oh, hopefully Joe doesn't show up and get all sleepy and ask for milk. Now it's ready for my sleepy ass, I think. Like, I brought noose balance shoes because I wanted to be comfy. Like, Vegas is ready. And nowhere did, I, nowhere did it become more apparent that my dreams have a ceiling than there. Like, yeah, I went into one of those, like, you could drive your dream car places. Have you seen that on the strip in Vegas? 
It's like you can drive whatever it is you want to drive. Whatever your wildest dreams are, whatever you've wanted to drive since you were little, you can drive it because it's Vegas. And I showed up, and there was a really nice Middle Eastern man there, and I went into his store, and he looked at me, and he goes, what do you want to drive? And he had pictures behind him, and he goes, do you want to drive a Maserati, an Aston Martin, or a Lamborghini? And I looked at him, and I was like, I didn't know those were cars. <laughs> I can't. They're not an auto trader. I just, I didn't know how to respond. So I looked at him, and I was like, do you have a Toyota Sienna? <laughs> I just, <laughs> like, I'm old, but I'm practical. I just want to be able to move around freely and be comfortable. I went to a lot of poor schools growing up. They do things differently at poor schools, man. Like, at the school I went to, every three months, they would come in and check kids for lice. <laughs> and they would just come in, like, random, just, like, knock, lice check. Show up in your room, like, all right, it's going to be random, you. You. Fucking you. Lice check right now. And the results are supposed to be discreet. You don't know who has lice and who doesn't. But then some of the kids didn't come back. <laughs> they show up later with like a new haircut. It's like, where were you? Like, oh, anyway, I went on vacation, you fucking liar. You had lice, that's what happened to you. You had lice. You're not fooling me. When I was growing up, I was a part of a, a program that they had for poor kids because I was in fifth grade and the average reading level of the class I was in was first grade. And so the government got together and they were like, how can we get these kids to read? And they're like, I know, let's incentivize them with pizza. And so I was a part of a program growing up called the Hungry Reader Program. <laughs> and the way this thing worked is you would read a book, do a book report, and then Pizza Hut would give you a free medium pizza. That's it, that's all you had to do. And that caused another problem. Because now obesity is like rampant amongst kids. And sometimes I'll be out with my friend and they'll be like, hey, look at that fat ass kid. But I'm optimistic, I'm like, hey, look at that good ass reader. Hey kids. You don't get that big with picture books, no. Thank you guys, that's my time. Give it up one more time from Jared from Subway. <laughs> I'm kidding, he's so funny. Because this next comic, he's amazing. You are gonna love him. Give it up for Jerry Tinoco. All right, how's everyone doing tonight? Oh man, damn, that light's really bright back there. Um, kind of like my future. Yeah, that's kind of my new thing now, guys. I'm trying to keep a positive attitude. You know, I feel like it's pretty important for our me mental health right now with all this shit going on. But I think uh, the older I get, the harder it is to stay positive, you know? Uh, especially like uh, your own body starts making it harder to stay positive, you know, like your body stops hurting, starts hurting everywhere. Um, you ever get those random pains? Like the other day, I got one of those sharp pains on my side. I was like, oh shit, here it is. This is the time. Fucking liver failure. I knew I should have stopped drinking, you know. And I know I'm only 27, but damn, I got like the body and the hairline of a fucking 40-year-old man, you know. And not one of those fit white guy 40-year-olds, you know. You know which ones I'm talking about. No, nah, man, like, I mean, look at this shit, man. I'm like half courting it, you know? This is, this is like Steph Curry range, you know? I didn't think it was gonna hit me this soon. I thought I had more time to enjoy having a full head of hair, you know? I still got so many questions, I'm not ready for this. You know, like when I wash my face, how high up should I go? Should I just keep going till I touch hair? You know, where's my face end, you know? Here, 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 
You know, and what about when I lose all my hair, you know? Do I just wash my entire head? Do I use shampoo or body wash, you know? I don't know. Yeah, you know, so I started freaking out. I thought I was dying. So I thought, like, I better schedule a doctor's appointment, get this shit checked out, you know, random pains all over my body. Uh, I, you know, I scheduled the appointment with the doctor, and they're like, oh, we're going to have Dr. Reese uh, check you up. It's like, oh, that's not my doctor. It's a different doctor, which sucks because I'm a grower, you know? You know, I'm not very presentable. Uh, so I was like, fuck. And I don't really like just anyone seeing the old turtleneck just like that, you know? So I made sure before I got called in to go into the restroom and, you know, give myself a little whirl, get a little blood flow going, get myself more presentable for the doctor. You know, so I go in there. It's like, we're doing this or what, doc? You know, so he does some tests. He comes back in. He's like, well, everything looks pretty normal, pretty fine. You, you should just check out what you're uh, eating and you should exercise more. It's like, what? Why, though? Like, well, uh, you're, you're pushing it, man. You're getting a little overweight. I was like, what? Well, this is news to me. You know, you mind checking that chart again? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Yo, you see right here? It says right there you're a fat piece of shit. I was like, oh, fuck. Damn, you know? I guess, uh, you know, I shouldn't be too surprised, though. I started noticing some changes, you know? Um, I'm definitely out of shape, you know? And it's pretty clear, especially while having sex, you know? Um, you know, when you get older and a little bigger, your reflexes aren't as good as they used to be, you know? So uh, pulling out is no longer a good method of birth control. And I learned that the hard way. You know, we had a little pregnancy scare. And I mean, who doesn't, right? You know, pregnancy scares, they build character, you know? But my girlfriend wasn't having it. She's like, no, we're not doing that anymore. And I was like, I tried to plead my case, right? It's like, baby, come on, man. My pullout game is clutch. It's clutcher than Kobe in the fourth quarter, babe. Clutcher than Kobe. It's like, nah, babe. You know, even Kobe knew when it was time to hang him up. And she was right, man. You know, I lost a step. I couldn't get it out quick enough. So, you know, she ended up having to get a fucking wishbone up her vagina. You know, that's what it is now, you know, birth control. I wish I could do something, but, you know, unfortunately there isn't anything yet. But I'm hopeful, though, for male birth control, uh, especially the way things are run out here. Because, you know, male birth control is going to be super accessible for us, you know. Uh, you know, the way the Republicans like to run medic medical services. You know, it's like I can already envision my future doctor checkups. Like, oh, yeah, thanks for coming in, Mr. Tanoko. Uh, hand sanitizer, Band-Aids, male birth control on the counter to the left. It's like, oh, no, I don't need it. Don't worry. It's like, ah, you should just take some, though. You know, well, you might need it, you know, someday. It doesn't be that easy. Um, yeah, so it's uh, especially bad now. Uh, the other day, I actually had to, you know, catch my breath during sex. I got winded, you know. I couldn't keep going. I was, like, exhausted, and I had to think quick. I'm like, ah, Jesus. You know, I had to, all right, you know what? So I just, like, wiped some sweat off my forehead and just, like, threw it on her back so she could feel something. It's like, oh, that's it, babe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's me. I just came. Uh, oh, don't worry, though. I got you. Next round, I got you. Don't even worry about it. But round two never comes, you know. I fall asleep every time. Um, yeah, so... 2019 is almost over, guys. Didn't that thing go by super fast? Yeah, man. Can't believe it. But all in all, this year has been pretty good to me so far. You know, like I said, uh, I'm dating this new girl now, and it's been going pretty great. But, man, getting into a new relationship in 2019, this is rough, man. You know, and I don't blame her for being so diligent. You know, it's, it's hard out here for women sometimes. But she had me go through, like, a background check. She asked me to get my credit score. You know, she made me do some SED testing, sign some consent forms, you know, the whole thing, you know. I was like, which is fine, you know, but I kind of felt like a fucking used car, you know. I could just, like, picture the car salesman. It's like, well, I'm not going to lie to you. This guy's a little beat up. You know, he's got, he's, he's got some mileage on him, you know, a few miles on him. But he's cheap. He's cheap. You know, he's a fixer-upper. He can get you where you want to go, you know. Um, but yeah, man, ladies out here getting the car facts on us. So, you know, I thought, man, we already went through all this trouble and might as well just keep going. So, you know, I, I scheduled a fertility appointment, um, and they straight up just have you beat off into a cup, you know? I was like, all right. Um, so I went, did my thing a little bit, man. I must've been dehydrated or something. I got a little trickle out and I was like, ah, I'm not liking my chances. So I went again, you know, I gave it another whack. Um, I come out 
I was like, all right, that's a decent amount. I come out. She's waiting for me. It's like, hey, what took you so long? You were in there like for 15 minutes. It's like, oh, yeah, I know. It's like a, I had to go again because that first time. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Again? I thought you could only get it up once. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you, guys. Give it up for Glory Magania, everybody. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Mo, wait, what's going on, for real? <laughs> Give it up for me, because I just got into a relationship. <laughs> You're going to clap even harder when I tell you how single I've been. Eight years. Clap. Please. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. It's been about almost five months since I've been with my boo which means I haven't farted in five months. It's that new, you know? I typically have a six pack, but I'm like bloated right now. <laughs> it's crazy, man. He's great though, he's great. He, I, I'm excited because he's white. The guy that laughed is black. He knows what I'm talking about. Why? Because I'm about to be a homeowner soon. About to own a house. You guys don't even know. I'm so excited. My credit score's already gone up. I don't even know how. I haven't even like made a payment on time, but I started dating this white guy and it's like, whoa. I'm like, what? That's how it works? I'll take it. I'll take it, man. It's cool. But he's funny though, because you know, he's white and he's like, I love Latinas. You guys are so passionate and so like jealous. I was like, what? Christmas came early. Now, I'm not your typical chick, though, because I have eight brothers, y'all. Eight brothers. So I, I love makeup, but I'm just like a tomboy, okay? And so I was like, I've been single for eight years. Let me compromise and show him my jealousy, right? So he was in the bathroom the other day. I see his phone laying around. First and foremost, I'm Christian. So I heard God say, like, mija, grab the phone. So I was obedient, so I grabbed it, and I'm like, all right. Then I heard the Holy Spirit say, like, fool, open it. There's no Pasco day. I was like, okay. It's cool. So I look at it, and I was like, oh, hell no. He gets a notification, and he comes out of the bathroom, and he's like, what are you doing? I was like, uh, who's Espen? He's like, babe, that's ESPN. I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I don't know how this jealousy stuff works. But we just got back from the South. You guys ever been to the South? Like Mississippi South? Yes, you're either white or you're black. You don't look anything like me. And if you do, you're cleaning houses. That's it, okay? It's crazy, man. So we get there, my best friend lives there. She lives in Mississippi. So they just got a Mexican restaurant up and going. Like it's so cool, man. And like the white people love Mexican food, right? So they're doing really well. So I go to the bathroom, lady starts following me and I was like, what the heck? She's like, oh, excuse me, where's the bathroom at? I was like, it's down the hallway to your left. She's like, oh, when did you get here? I was like, this morning. She's like, wow, your English is so good. It's like she really thought like I arrived in the US that morning. I was like, okay. And she looks at me and she was like, um, like, are you Mexican or something? Considering the political climate right now and me being in Mississippi, I was like, nope. She's like, uh, what are you? And I said, I'm Samoan. <laughs> she said, what's that? And I said, just really big looking Mexicans, you know? What? And speaking of being Samoan, all my life, guys, I have been a big girl. I actually lost 83 pounds within the past six years. Yes. Thank you, thank you. That's why I'm hella sweating up here. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's crazy. But my brothers used to say I was adopted. They would always say I was adopted. And I was like, where'd you guys get me from? Like El Salvador, Mexico. They're like, no, fool, we got you from Samoa. 
I was like, out of all countries, okay, I'll take it. So as I got older, I lost weight and I would still milk it. I would still say that I was Samoan, you know, because when do you see a small Samoan? It's rare, right? It's like a unicorn, right? So I was like, okay. So I started a comedy in San Francisco, y'all. And my roommates at the time were two Samoan girls, okay? So we were going on the BART, which is like the, the subway type thing. We're about to go in and this guy stops me. He's like, what's your ethnicity? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm Samoan. He's like, dang, you're a skinny Samoan. I was like, what? All I heard was skinny. So this lady's walking on by. I'm not gonna tell you her ethnicity because I'm not racist, but I'll act like her. And she's like, uh, excuse me. You was not Samoan. I was like, I'm totally Samoan. She said, Samoans don't talk like that. I was like, she's right. What do Samoan people kind of sound like? Like cavemen-ish, right? So I said, I mean, ooh, I am Samoan. And my roommates are laughing in the corner, and I'm like, help me. We, you know, get over here. She said, prove it. Do the haka. You guys know what the haka is? It's an awesome thing. They do it in New Zealand. Samoans do it. Rugby players do it, right? Football players. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know a lick of Samoan. So I wing it, and I improvise. So I said, moof. Akuna matata, akuna matata. And my roommates are cracking up in the corner, and I'm like, what else do I say? And I'm like, uh, uh, oh, 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 no, no. Oh, 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 no, no. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. Ah. That's how we do up here, guys. So you guys, I'm, I lost 83 pounds. We'll just kick it to the side. Just like my weight. She looks at me and said, go on with your best self. You is Samoan. I got so scared, man, because I thought I was gonna get my butt whooped by a white girl from Oakland. Uh, guys, you guys have been so much fun. My name is Glory Maganya. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you for coming out to We Own the Labs. I'm your host, Stephen Briggs. Good night.